Now that you're familiar with the project window and with bins, let's take a look at basic editing using the Composer and Timeline windows. We'll begin to assemble a trailer for the documentary Running the Sahara, developed by Academy Award winners Matt Damon and James Moll. Let's start by creating a new sequence to edit video into. Now make sure the sequences bin is open, right click in the bin and choose New Sequence. Give the sequence a name and then double click it to load it into the timeline. Since you haven't yet edited any video, the timeline will appear completely blank. Now here's a really important tip while you're working through these videos. When you're practicing your editing using one of the provided sequences in the tutorial projects, right click the sequence in its bin and choose Duplicate. Rename the duplicated sequence as desired and then double click it to open. This way, you'll always have a copy of the original sequence to go back to after you've finished experimenting. Now let's start editing. Make sure you have a bin with video clips open. Remember, to help identify the clips, you can switch between text, frame, and script views. Double click one of the clip icons. We'll start building our trailer with establishing shots of the Sahara. You'll see the clip appear in the source monitor, the left of the two video monitors in the composer window. You use the source monitor to review your clips and set in and out points for the portions of the video you want to edit into your sequence. To quickly scrub through the clip, click and drag across the light gray position bar directly below the image. To play back from any point, just press the spacebar. Press the spacebar again to pause. To step through the video one frame at a time, use the left and right arrows on your keyboard. Now before we go any further, let's look at a really nice method for reviewing footage, and that's the J, K and L keys. Press the L key and your clip begins to play forward. Press the J key and it reverses. Pressing the K key will stop playback. To play the clip at double speed, press the L key twice. Of course, pressing the J key twice will play in reverse at double speed. And finally, to play the clip back in slow motion, hold down the K key while pressing either the J or L keys. Take a bit of time to practice working with these three keys. Once you have a natural feel for how J, K and L playback works, you'll find it extremely efficient for reviewing footage. The point of the source monitor is to decide what part of the clip you want to edit into your sequence timeline. First, you'll set an endpoint for the start of the section. Move to the appropriate frame using the mouse, the arrow keys, or the JKL keys. Press the I key to set an endpoint. Now move to the end of the section you want to edit into your sequence and press O to set an out point. To review the section you've selected to edit, click the Play Into Out button located below the main play button. Now you can always readjust your in and out points using the I and O keys again. Once you're happy with the selection though, it's time to edit it into the sequence. There are two main edit methods, splice in and overwrite. But since this is the first edit of the sequence, it actually doesn't matter which you choose. We'll take a look at the difference between the two a little later. For now, click the overwrite button. You'll immediately see a bar appear in the timeline and your video appear in the monitor on the right hand side of the composer window. This one's called the record monitor. The source monitor is previewing the original clip, while the record monitor is previewing your sequence. It just so happens that the only clip in your sequence so far is also the one loaded into the source monitor. Notice that as you scrub the source monitor, the record monitor stays where it is. That's because you're simply reviewing the original source footage. But when you scrub the position bar in the record monitor, the position indicator in the timeline also moves. That's because your record monitor is actually a preview of your sequence in the timeline. This will all make a lot more sense as we add another video clip. Let's double click another clip from the bin to load it into the source monitor. Again, review and set in and out points. Before you click overwrite, drag the position indicator toward the end of the clip in the timeline. As you drag, hold down the command key on a Mac or the control key on a PC. Holding down this modifier key causes the position indicator to snap neatly to the edges of clips. Now click the overwrite button. The new clip gets added directly after the last one. New video is added at the location of the position indicator, which is why we snapped to the end of the first clip. You can now continue to build up the trailer by loading new clips into the source monitor and editing them into the timeline using the overwrite button. 
And of course, if you make a mistake, feel free to use undo and redo. Undo is Control Z on a PC or Command Z on a Mac, while Redo is Control R or Command R. And as your sequence grows, use the scale bar and scroll bar at the base of the timeline to navigate through all of your clips. In the next video, we'll take a look at how to insert video midway into your sequence using both the overwrite and splice in buttons. <laughs>